Hey there, fellow Whovians. Welcome to episode 22 of Two Girls, a Guy, and a Tardis. Hello. Starring Nicole, Joanna, and me, John. Hello. Wah wah. Wah wah. <laughs> uh, I don't. Is there any news to talk about? There's a. They, they did announce that. Uh, the Cubs have a new manager? Oh, wait, that's not yes, Dr. Yes, they announced that too. <laughs> but they, I saw today they said something about they're not doing any more of the Doctor Who video games. They were supposed to do two more after. Maybe if they actually put some thought and effort into it and got someone good like Bioware to make a good Doctor Who video <laughs> game that appeals to adults and youngins, <laughs> they could do it. I mean, I've played the one that they have on the PS3. It, it's Doctor Who. I mean, but I always had this image of, and I, I don't know if you two will know this or not, this game, but some of our other fans probably would. The company Bioware is known for making really good, really deep M- or RPG games. They made Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, and, I, and they made a few other ones. There's a couple of companies out there that could do it really well. BioWare's really good at it. And in Knights of the Old Republic, Old Republic, you have a ship. Oh, they made Mass Effect, I think, too. You have a ship, and you go to planets and do things to advance the storyline. I always thought, why not make a Doctor Who game set up that way that starts off with you being Hartnell, the ship is your TARDIS, you go wherever you're needed, and there's an over... like an running through storyline, and at some point you regenerate into other Doctors. Oh. But that would mean mm. the BBC would have to give it to somebody other than their own in-house people, or to some other, you know, game company than these, like... I don't even know where, what other games the ones they use make, usually. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be a really good way. You can even have, like, the other Doctors down, as downloadable content or DLC or something. I mean, you know, you could keep adding to it, you know, every... You make it, like, a lot of games now have seasons. You know, even MMORPGs have, like, a season where this is a storyline. Mm-hmm. You could do that very easily, and it'd be very, very cool. And they won't do it. And now they're not going to make any more. I have some news. Go ahead. Um, the so date, kind of the trailer, another trailer is going to be released on Saturday. That's not going to show anything. But it may show something? Well, the one they hit now doesn't show anything. It show it know. show it yeah no I I do know I just watched the one that came out last week or whatever or two weeks ago, it doesn't really show like maybe this one will be the Comic Con one. No, I don't know about that. I'm really surprised no one leaked that. <laughs> you would have thought someone would have by now. Mm-hmm. No spoilers. No spoilers. But I don't think any of them, I don't think anything they do is gonna really. I mean, they're not gonna spoil anything. I mean, they, to spo- to really, to really spo- I mean, we know the Daleks are in it, we know the Zygons are in it, we know John Hurt's in it, we know I'm Billy Piper and Joan, yeah, her and David Tennant and, and Clara, and I'm naming real names and character names, I know, <laughs> but still. We know all these people are in it, including the Brigadier's daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, what can you do? To, to spoil it, you'd have to show, like, Paul McGann or Sylvester McCoy or somebody. <laughs> because... We already know the footage they showed in this trailer, while it looked cool, wasn't recent. Because Tom Baker and Colin, or Tom Baker does not look like that anymore. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I know they don't... I would, you, and, and you know Matt Smith isn't going to die in this. Or if he does, it would be at the end when he, and he'd turn into Peter Capaldi. But I, I'm pretty sure he'll regenerate sometime during the Christmas special. Just once. Mm-hmm. I want to see a regeneration... Mid Christmas special or at the beginning, one that doesn't go awry, <laughs> where the new guy picks up and finishes off, kind of like what Tennant did in his in his first episode, but not with pajamas and stuff. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that, that's what I'd like to uh, like to see. Mm-hmm. And we also have images from Deb the Doctor. Ooh, now see that would have some that might have some spoilers, but again, you know who's in it. Yeah, they're really not. It's like Matt Smith's face. Actually, you guys... Did they release new ones that we haven't seen yet? Um, there's one with David Tennant and Joanna Page. Okay, which we expect, because they're in the episode, I mean... Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's an... Let me get to the link. 
you know, you you could really forward these email these links through email to like somebody like me who doesn't have. Oh, uh, it's on Facebook. Is it on our Facebook page? See, yes, I don't. Uh, I'm. I, that's why I have you guys because I don't. Work's been bu- real life has been busy, and unless we get sponsorship, hey, anyone out there want to sponsor us? <laughs> like seriously, thirty bucks a month. Seriously, that's all I want, just to pay for the hosting, for now. And, and you know, but if we ever get sponsors, we're you know, real life. I don't have to worry about real life. <laughs> I would be more than glad to spend more time on Twitter and Facebook. But we're just too busy at work. I just haven't had time. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everything that I've done so far has been early in the morning when I'm getting ready to go to work. Like at 4 a.m. Also, can we maybe get like 100 likes? That'd be really awesome, people. I know, there's like, a, I know, I know there's like a thousand of you listening. <laughs> Find us on Facebook. Like us, if you will. Please. Okay, I see Matt. I see one that says "Ready for breakfast." Yes, with Matt Smith and like the fish fingers and custard and the jelly babies. I saw the, the doctor. I saw the poster. The history with, of Doctor Who. Which is I saw the cool. poster with Capaldi, which I think is badass looking. If it's real, I don't know uh-huh. if it is or not. And then there's all the doctors. Oh, here it is. Well, I see the one photo. Well, she looks lovely. Um, click on the link above it. Which, the, this, this is great mm-hmm. radio, by the way. This is great podcasting, by the way. It says, like, click on the link. Go to our Facebook page, out. click on the le- link. See, but these are all from, they're from the BBC, so it's not going to, oh, Queen Elizabeth I. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're, are they finally going to finish that off? Did, wasn't that a running thing that started with the That's Shakespeare episode? I'd... I thought that was Victoria. So no. Victoria or, or Elizabeth? Uh, uh, no, yeah, Victoria. the Shakespeare Code, she was mad at David yeah, yeah, Tennant, yeah. and we didn't know why. But this is before that. Right. But she's it, time, timey wimey. Uh huh. Yeah, but she might meet David Tennant twice in his time stream. I mean, mm-hmm. I see the long scarf on yeah. the on whoever that is. Uh, there's the three doctors. It, it really could have been just called the three doctors. Mm-hmm. There's the there's Clara. Uh, um, John and Berg. the Birgit Berg's daughter. Yeah, uh, Clara's in it. I saw the Briggs daughter. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm only enamored with one of the two, and it's not the Briggs' daughter. <laughs> I'm looking at the whole thing. Yeah, there was some cool shots on there. I mean, some of, I think a couple of them I'd seen already. Like where he's hanging off the bottom of the TARDIS. I mean, they had production shots yeah. of when they filmed that. That, yeah. was just, that was a dead giveaway. I, I'm not sure what they're going to do, that they're going through, like, Elizabethan times and Zygons and Dalek. Well, and, you released and the Briggs' the... daughter and... There's a lot going on in this episode, so... They released the synopsis. It seemed like there were three different storylines going on. Oh, so maybe they don't all meet each other at the same time? I'm assuming well, eventually no, they must Smith get did. together, but... John Hurt and Matt was... Smith must have met each other. Yeah, but they did... I know they released the synopsis. Plus, we know David Tennant and Matt Smith worked together, because I mean, there's plenty of pictures of them together on set, so I mean, why would you just be hanging out? Yeah, it said in 2013... Spo- possible spoiler alert. Yes. This is just the official synopsis from the BBC, though. In 2013, something terrible is awakening in London's National Gallery. In 1562, a murderous plot is afoot in Elizabethan England. And somewhere in space, an ancient battle reaches its devastating conclusion. All of reality is at stake as the Doctor's own dangerous past comes back to haunt him. So we see why we see why Elizabeth is pissed at Tennant. We see John Hurt fighting in the Time War, but what TARDIS would he be using? Because they, they only showed the one council, I wonder. I wonder how they're going to do that. Well, rumor was, rumor was that Hurt is going to be an aged version of McGann. Which I guess I could see, but why not just use McGann? Because yeah. he'd be an aged version of himself already. Yeah, I, I would... But uh, whatever. Like, I would have and liked like, to there's, seen like, there's, ever, like there's ever been a, a doctor that made it long enough to, you know, in this whole count, oh, count the regenerations. He's he, it's wrong, the wrong number. He's got, he, you know, I mean, people arguing about how many he has. There were old episodes where they flash back to re- regenerations before Hartnell. Mm-hmm. Oh, give me this BS that oh, you only got thirteen. Oh, they changed the story. As they went along in the classic series, it was like for this episode well, because, we want this. Well, you know so, why they were making it up as they went yeah. along. After after Pertwee took over, they had to ba- fill in a whole backstory lore of <laughs> the whole thing. It didn't exist until Pertwee took over. Yeah. The time the whole Time Lord story didn't exist till the end of Troughton. Yeah. 
And on Friday, November 22nd, uh, Dave Kennedy and Matt Smith are, are going to be on the Graham Norton Show. Which we now get in HD. <laughs> Excellent. And I've been missing. I love Graham Norton. <laughs> he's so great. He's so hilarious. Uh, anything else? Um, Neil Gaiman was announced as the as the 11th writer for Nothing Oak Block. It's a book. It's a Doctor Who book. Oh. So he's not doing another episode? Not next mm-hmm. season. You would think it would take less effort for they, him to write an episode than a book. He's not a writer for the 8th season. I like this first story. A lot of people like... It's funny, when they mm-hmm. first air, everyone's like, it's so great! And three months later, like, yeah, the story sucked. I'm like, but you just mm-hmm. said it was... Like, to me, it was a good story. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Far-fetched and all. I get it, but it was good. Do we have any information about um, an adventure in time and space when that's going to be airing in the U.S.? I think they said that's should airing the 22nd. Yeah, I was going to say, it should so be I think it soon. airs the day before the 50th. Yeah. I mean, it should be this month for sure. I okay. thought I heard that. Yeah. Uh, what about the Big Finish audio? Do we know when that's being released? They have a 50th anniversary with, uh, I think, both that's Bakers. Out. Is it out already? Mm-hmm. I, th- I knew it was soon or it was already out. Was, Late remember- at the end? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if, that's if, out. so if you're still hung up on uh, this You can being buy a- it on vinyl. Yeah, that's useful. <laughs> that's cool. I, yeah, I have a record player. I, I use it like one. I use it like once a month, maybe once. A, no, not even once every six months. I come down here, throw some Temptations on, or Four Tops, or Beatles. <laughs> Are you teaching the little one, like all these music? Oh, I thought you said Elvis. I'm like, I'm not an Elvis. <laughs> no, fan. the little one. About music, she was listening to Iron Maiden today. <laughs> she was watching the concert footage with me. She almost hit the devil horns with her hand. She oh, so close. <laughs> I'm so, so proud of her. Aww. Daddy's little, me- oh. Daddy's little metal head. Oh, you're raising her well, apparently. But, uh... No, she's heard, like, the Beatles and stuff, yeah. Oh, okay. she She does not listen to... I mean, she hears, like, the Disney stuff when she watches Disney, but we don't mm-hmm. listen to it in the cars or anything. I mean, maybe one day she'll want us to, but... I, so I, right I, now. I just don't. Well, I know, but this is when it all starts. This is when Bieber fever and all that crap starts. <laughs> is when they're little. Right now, she comes home and points at the TV that's turned off and goes, Min Mao! Because she wants to watch Mickey Mouse. <laughs> good for her. Yeah, not good for Daddy. You know how many Mickey Mouse <laughs> freaking. Hey, uh, I saw several today. Yes! Like you, four? Like four. <laughs> you, you, you think Doctor Who episodes have plot holes? You should watch Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. <laughs> I don't care about Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Um, I'm hoping one day Isabella comes home and goes, Doctor Who, or Doctor, and points at the TV. <laughs> yeah, uh, the oh, I've been watching a TV series. It's a couple years old now, but it was with Peter Davison. He played a detective. It was called The Last Detective. <laughs> played a lov- loving, or um, not loving, a lovable, somewhat bumbling detective <laughs> that his police chief didn't like, and everyone gave him crap because he like helped people. That even if he knew it was phony, he'd go and talk to people because they wanted, you know, that's how he felt you should be to the public. So he's kind of like, you know, not what police are anymore there. And he does solve his crimes. And uh, basically it's called The Last Detective because he's the last detective is in. He's the last detective that the chief would ever pick to put on something unless it's a crappy job. So, but it was actually pretty good. I mean, it's off now. I think it had a three or four series run. Mm-hmm. But I was watching that on Acorn TV, so it was, it was enjoyable. I like it. Although that does remind me, Peter Davison was being talked about again for, I guess he, I think he gave an interview, and one of the things he said was that he didn't think the doctor should ever be a woman. Yeah, but I think, I, I've talked to so many people, and, and even people he, we've had on here said the same thing. And then his other statement was he thought that, I forget how he worded it, but kind of like he... He thought it was better in the new series that that there's more sexual tension in the TARDIS. Well, there was sexual tension in the TARDIS before. It was just creepy. Well, he was saying, like, with him, you know, he wasn't even allowed to, like, put his arm around a companion. Oh, yeah, cause, yeah. heaven forbid. Yeah. yeah. So, so he thought that would have been good on the show, like, he just I'm assuming pe- when he was on it. He but- just wanted to put his arm around Tegan or Perry. Because certainly nothing was going to happen between, like, Colin Baker's doctor and his companions. I... Yeah, that's true. I think the BBC is argue. starting a week-long 
marathon of Doctor Who. Yeah, but we, well, that's for our UK listeners then. <laughs> Most no, of no, 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 BBC America. Oh, BBC America, camp. is it? You know, I, the, the woman thing with the doctor, though. I mean, it's like when we had Amanda on. I, I asked her. I go flat out. I go, "Would you want a woman?" Then, before I even finish it, she's like, "No." The majority of people you talk to don't would, wouldn't want it. It's like just make a new character, make a spinoff show. Why? Because why have to force a character do that and then force it to have to live up to the last fifty years of show? And then if the writing's not good or something, it's going to be blamed on her being a woman, which isn't fair. You know, I mean, why? Why not just have another one? Yeah, I've been I, saying that for years. I would watch a ti- I would watch a female Time Lord. Just n- n- you know, bring back the Ronnie or make a, you know somebody. Romana. Romana would be oh, be brilliant to watch because I don't think I, I don't have a pro- I don't think that a woman can't do it. I just don't think after fifty years of it being one way that that's gonna like. Well, to be fair, Busty did a nice job writing her version of it. Mm-hmm. Of course, the girls were kind of, you know, they were basically naked. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, still, it worked. <laughs> I think it could. I just I would feel like could, they'd, I wouldn't want them to... They'd always be in the shadow, and they'd always be under more scrutiny whenever she did something. You know what I mean? It would just be... It would, it, I think it would put unnecessary strain on the lead actress, the writers, and the show in general. It would be... There'd be much more criticism and controversy about every little thing done. I mean, I yeah, I wasn't like, oh, the doctor has to regenerate into a woman. I want him as a woman. But I went, I mean, if it was the right person, I could like, if they just saw like, if they knew of an actress and went she is just perfect for this role. It's exactly what we want. But I don't want them to like cast a woman just, just to, to go. Just to cast a woman. See, now the doctor's a woman. Like, that, it, it's the same thing with when they say, "Oh, what about a black doctor?" I personally had no problem with that. I thought the guy from Luther would have been great. Would have been great. <clears throat> and I've seen numerous other, you know, black English actors that would have been great. And for whatever reason, they went with Capaldi, which uh, from, I think he's going to work out too. I mean, I don't see it as like slighting anybody by not doing it. You know, like I, to me, it's just it, I, I think just start a whole, just start a new. Just, you know, give Jenny a spinoff show and bring her back. I mean... She's just out there. Well, because I think there'd be a lot of, like... If if people complain about canon and timey-wimey being used now, can you imagine how they'd have to, you know, it, to, like, rework so much stuff? <laughs> it's just... Like I said, I, I, would wa- I would watch a woman. If, even if the doctor was a woman, I would watch. I just... All the suggestions people have made have not been who I would... Who I'd want. I mean, mm-hmm. would you want old? Would you want young? Middle aged? I mean, the doctors have been getting younger and younger, and then Capaldi's, you know, older. Mm-hmm. I mean, would you, like, Judy Dench? I mean, <laughs> you know, maybe? I don't know. They, they, they always mention, uh, what's her name? That was in the movie Red. She played the, the Helen assassin. Helen Mirren. They always mention Helen Mirren. I can't see that. I, I, personally, I don't see it. Not that it wouldn't work, I just don't see it. I think she's brilliant, but I just mm. don't see that. Well, also, I mean, she's not going to take a role on. Yeah, you know who? You know who I could see doing it is uh, Joanne Lumley. The one wasn't? Oh, not Joanna Lumley. Yeah, right. The one from uh, Abfab. Yeah. Yeah, I could see her pulling it off because she could be kind of more. She has. She's done it. Mm-hmm. I was going to say she's, she was. Yeah. I could, I could completely see, see someone like her being able to handle it and do it. When people finally suggest someone that I can get behind and say, yes, <laughs> I could totally see that. But they haven't. Mm-hmm. And I love when people are like, well, the doctor should always be English. Really? Because David Tennant was Scottish. So is Capaldi. So is Capaldi. <laughs> Joanna, since you are a news, you're a news girl. There's a minisode, but it's called The Last Day, but there's no other information about it as of now. I hate minisodes. Okay, right. Before, it, you have to go online to watch something that shows you and explains part of the the main story. Really, why do I have to do that? <laughs> Did, not sounding like an old crotchety man, but that's Doctor ridiculous. Who. Oh, back to what I was saying though about Big Finish. So, for those of you that think this is a <laughs> uh, eight year reunion, the the Big Finish audio is out there for you. Yes. Because somehow it would have been possible to bring back like all the 
you know, Tom and Colin Baker and mm-hmm. be like, ah, oh, they look fine. They look just like they did. I, I still Even think, Colin though, Baker was like, listen, I yeah. can't do it. He's like, look at me. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> he was pretty trim and had yeah. a lot of hair back then. That is a total opposite now. <laughs> Yeah, I still think McCoy. He's a lot jollier now. He's kind of the only ones you could you, you get. Could... The only ones you would be able to get would be McCoy, McGann, maybe Davison. Davison's bald now for the most part, but he wore a hat in a lot of the scenes, so you mm-hmm. you could kind of do it. And that's why McCoy, I think, because he had yeah. that kind of, I mean, jacket, scarf, hat, umbrella. I mean, he had so many accessories and layers. I, I think you you could kind of hide his. Yeah, but I think if you see any of the old ones, it's because they're they're pulling him from other episodes and. CGIing him in mm-hmm. somehow. Hell, they did a CGI hologram of Tupac. What, we can't do this on <laughs> Doctor Who? But, so, yeah, back to our news. Joanna, go ahead. Um, That's it for me. Yeah, I got nothing news-wise. I mean, basically, this episode's going to be us telling how great we think Sylvester McCoy was, because I don't think anybody on this podcast doesn't like Sylvester <laughs> McCoy. No, we don't. I, I, I mean... <laughs> They're very. We don't always have a consensus. Uh, Pertwee, we do. We're the only. I think we're the only podcast in America and in the world where three people like Pertwee. Uh, I enjoyed the Pertwee episodes, and I started rewatching them. And I started mm-hmm. watching some of the old Baker ones again. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes Baker's episodes. Sometimes he's just a little on the dry side for me. <laughs> but you know, still not bad. But uh, Sylvester McCoy, who is in the Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Which I have right, had yes. since Easter and not been able to watch. <laughs> so let me tell you how happy I am about that. Been looking forward to that. I bought it on Blu-ray special edition. All ready mm-hmm. to go. Projector down here. Yeah, I haven't been able to watch it. So yeah, you have to watch it. It's so much fun. Gee, th- gee thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got Star Trek Into Darkness sitting on my on my thing to do list too. I have Sherlock. I've seen all the Sherlock's. I have, too, but I have to watch it again. That doesn't count. I know. You can't get upset that you have to watch something again. I haven't <laughs> watched it once. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> so, Sylvester so McCoy was the seventh Doctor. We first see him in Time and the Ronnie. That's the first episode he was in. It was when four Colin episodes. When Colin Baker didn't film his own regeneration scene? Uh, yeah, Colin Baker was very upset about getting canned, which so I can McCoy understand. in a wig? So McCoy wore the wig and dressed like Colin for the regeneration scene. We once again see the uh, TARDIS wardrobe. Yes. As McCoy is looking through stuff, and he reminisces over some of the older outfits, I think, too. Yeah, he puts on... They, yeah. Both he and Colin yeah. Baker put on yeah. some of the... They both, I think, did a yeah. pert week. Mm-hmm. Which I think was a great touch. You know, it's it's those little hints that they did like that, and now you're starting to see again in the new show, which, which I like. Uh... The episode, once again, stars Dorani, who is hell-bent on... I don't know what she wants. She wants to control the universe, but by controlling the universe, she's, he, all her plans would end in it being destroyed. So I, I don't know what she... <coughs> I don't think she really thought it out. It's for the science of it. But she has Mel kidnapped. No. She the doctor, cr- like, the doctor crashes gets, the, the... The TARDIS crashes. TARDIS. He's, they're both unconscious. Uh, the doctor is taken by her minions and brought to her... She is dressed like Mel yeah. at some point. I think, rig- I think initially he knows it's Dorani, but then his regeneration's like messing with him or well, something. Well, she uh, takes away his memory. Yes, She that's like what gives it was, him yeah. something and takes away his memory. Yeah, so for then... a while, yeah. So she dresses like Mel. Because she wants him to she's fix Mel. the whatever she had that needed fixing, and he was ah. the only one that could do it. Well, because he, she needs him because it turns out she's kidnapped minds from all the great pe- scientists and thinkers throughout history. Which, oddly enough, they seem to all be from Earth. But, yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> so she's got all these bodies of people. Einstein, yeah. And there's one for the doctor. And he eventually figures out that she is not Mel. <laughs> she is, in fact, the Ronnie. And not she, until Mel comes, though. And he accuses her of being the Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's funny, there's a, great inter- inter- there's a great interchange between, or great exchange between them, where she's talk- he's talking to the Ronnie, and he's talking about the Ronnie, because she's being Mel, and she's like, oh, the mm-hmm. Ronnie, we need to fix this, because if it's important to the Ronnie, we need to know what it does. And he is, like, kind of complimentary about her, like, intelligence, but then goes off on a tangent about how she's, like, insane and all this other stuff. <laughs> and it was pretty well played. It wasn't, I don't think it was, I'd say it was a great episode, 
But there were moments no. of it that were a lot of fun. Like when she finally, when he fixes it and she captures him, she puts him in this machine with all these other people, and they're all like, wow, to solve this equation, what we need to do this, is this, is this. And he just starts, like, you hear his voice, mm-hmm. and he's just goofing off. He's, like, dancing around. And then I think he accidentally solves No, he he says something to make it sound like he solved it, but in fact it's the wrong number. I think so it causes think, well, its destruction or something. No, he, he once he's out of the brain and standing there and the brain is like giving the equation and then Oh he blurts he, it out. He, yeah, yeah he blurts it's out like the number. Forty seven and he's like well, thirty three and then they're like Oh yeah, you're right, it's thirty three. <laughs> oh, correction noted and then he's like oh I would have loved for him to have been like forty two. <laughs> I think that would have been a great nod too for the former script ad- editor who mm-hmm. left uh I don't remember when um Douglas Adams left, but it, it, script editor wise, it was Andrew Andrew Cartmel, I think, yeah. for this this run. Uh, so Tommy Ronnie, you know, he ends up defeating the mass the evil plan or whatever, mm-hmm. and they leave him and him and Mel leave. Not a horrible episode, not great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's watchable because it's it's McCoy, and there's some fine parts of it where he's playing the spoons, and you know, you really get a yeah. good feel he of McCoy and works like, that in. Yeah, he does. Well, because he could do it in real life, that was like a mm-hmm. big thing. That I remember either listening to. Sophie Aldred at Chicago TARDIS talk about that or something, something to that effect. He did it at Galley. He was yeah. playing the spoons. Yeah, he told me he was doing it at Galley. Because, uh, to be honest, the one thing to me that was different about McCoy than any other doctor up until that point, McCoy reminded me of a vaudevillian showman. Yeah. He's... He played the doctor like a showman. I mean, he had a sinister a sinister side magic that you tricks. didn't see at, time, at times. But, yeah, there was magic tricks. There was illusions. There was a spoon playing, hat tricks. Bird calls. Bird calls. It just made it whimsical and fun, you know? And mm. he did a brilliant job at it. I-, I loved how he played it. Even when he was more sinister, he wasn't... You knew he was being sinister. It wasn't like he was conniving like Troughton or Hartnell, <laughs> you know? And he did truly care about the people that traveled with him, like Davison did. He didn't try strangling anybody. <laughs> well, I think only one doctor gets to have that title. Give it time. The show's still on. <laughs> <laughs> so they uh, they do leave there. And head to the Paradise Towers. Which is one of my favorite episodes. I love Paradise Towers. It's so great. It, I mean, yeah, the special effects and the costuming and the makeup isn't great, but it, it's the late 80s, and the BBC controller had some hard on for getting rid of Doctor Who, even though it was doing decently mm-hmm. well. I mean, in England, you can get four or five million viewers, and that's still a top show. I mean, they, they don't have as many people as here, you know? Mm-hmm. He just didn't like sci-fi. He wanted to focus on Victorian stuff, which, you know, they do really well because of still stuck in that you know world uh it's very 80s i remember it is nice it, it's Tower. extremely so like, 80s it's just so but 80s all the costumes and the ex- makeup it's extremely great you have uh factions of a girl of two girl gangs you have the kings mm-hmm. red and blue yeah i think when the other kings got killed you have janitorial like garbage robots that turn out to be killing people. The cannibal ladies. You have the these two sweet old ladies who turn out to be cannibals. Want to eat Mel. Yeah, yeah. It's just a del- it's just a delicious like a delicious Douglas Adam esque like dystopian apartment complex. Right? I mean like you could see this being part of like the Hitchhiker's Guide book <laughs> in a way. Like, oh, we're stopping at Paradise Towers. They have a pool on the roof. That's where Mel wants to go. Yeah, that's what I, I was like. I remember Mel just wanted to go swimming. Yeah, yeah. Well, after what you went through, I can understand that. <laughs> uh, it was just a neat episode. It was enjoyable. They, 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 Mel gets captured by, like, every faction there. And every yeah. faction thinks she's up to something else. <laughs> uh, the doctor, they believe, is the great architect. And yeah. the intelligence running... The towers wanted the great architect to kill him, but why do you want to kill him? There was some reason. Like yeah, at first, I, he was like an honored I, I guest, remember and then they wanted the, to kill him. I remember more all the bizarre side. Yeah, which there plots was a lot. There, there the, was a lot. The main one. I I don't really. There was a lot of running through the stove. I remember. Yeah, the, there was the the. He was like a famous architect that built them, and then he disappeared while building it or something, and then. He was I think, I think in the out. building. Was still was that it or he was, was the something? building? Or yeah, he was there in the was AI or something. Yeah. yeah, there was some resolution to that. But I remember more the cannibal ladies and. But they were so funny. <laughs> they were so great. I mean, Nelson Paradise Towers was enjoyable. 
I, I yeah. like that one. Uh, we leave Paradise Towers and we go and meet Delta and the Bannermen with weird looking aliens. And is it the tour bus full of people going? It's to... like the fifties. Supposed to go to Disneyland, wind up crashing in yeah. England. We had the weird baby, and Jeez. and then they're in like a little, like uh, I can't think of the word for it, little place to stay and. But a B and B. No, it's it's like for tour groups. You kind of get the feel, like yeah, no, it is. You yeah, know where they it was, all oh, stay and specific, have a. They were time. Weren't they time traveling to see the past or something as a the, tour? The, they were supposed to go to Disneyland. Yeah, in but, the bus. But where, it, I thought they were supposed to crashed. go back into the past for it, though. Or were they? Yeah, right, they right, were coming yeah, from okay. the future to like the. I think maybe I, I'm to the fifties. Like I believe Disneyland it was. when it first opened, yeah, kind yeah. of thing. And they, where they crash is still the same time period. I think. Yeah, yeah, but in England, yeah. <laughs> didn't make it to Disney. Well, it had the old TARDIS control controls. Um, and then yeah, there there was the weird baby, and it was not great. No, who was a bad guy in it? I don't even. I mean, it was there was the like princess who had the little green baby, the poor baby that they put in makeup, and and there was someone trying to get it because there was like a war oh, going on. Oh, they're trying on. to kill she her. Escaped. They're trying to kill her. Um, her child, her child, yeah. or whatever. Because uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But I I don't remember who that was or I just remember they were having like a war. She escaped at the last minute. And, yeah, it was between the the, and then ba- had the, the baby. banner men were yeah, were one faction and yeah, yeah it, it wasn't super great. Uh, but luckily after that we go into dragon fire, <laughs> which is rather good. We meet Ace, who's a waitress, and get rid gets, of Mel. It gets fired. Y- you know, Mel. To be honest, Mel would. Uh, McCoy wasn't too horrible. No. Mel was alright with McCoy. Mel, Mel and Colin Baker was yeah. better. But Mel never annoyed me as much as she's annoyed other people. I, no. There's a lot of hatred for her. I mean, there's like message boards like, I hate my. It's been 20 some years. It, yeah, I. Come on. Bonnie Langford's done a lot in that 20. Yeah, she, you know, she, she wouldn't be my favorite was, companion, but I don't. Interesting side note is that Bonnie Langford is actually younger than Sophie Aldred. <laughs> but in the show. She mm-hmm. was more supposed to be like in her late twenties, and Sophie was like a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Because Bonnie Aldred played in uh, the in- the London performance, I think, of uh, Chicago. She played like mm-hmm. the lead, and look, I mean, she looks good for her age. I mean, so is Sophie. But I mean, mm-hmm. I always, you know, I didn't realize there was. I thought that Bonnie was a good seven mm-hmm. or eight years older, and she's like yeah. two years younger. So, but Dragonfire, there's a dragon. They're on an ice planet. Yeah, it was it was like a prison for the. I, I'm bad at remembering the names. I remember the, a little kid getting lost and them trying to. They finally reunite him at the end with his stuffy, mm-hmm. his stuffy parents. Well, it was. I remember it was the the ship. Like I don't know if people didn't know or if he, that it was actually like the prison for the guy on it. They they like been banished and they kept like his the key to controlling the ship was in the, was in the head of the dragon, right. the crystal or whatever. Yeah. So he sent. Glitz was back. Yes. And he sent him to go find the treasure of the dragon so yeah. that he could escape. And mm-hmm. then, of course, the doctor gets involved. Our and... synopsises aren't great people, but yeah. this was an episode we liked. <laughs> well, I liked. I mean, it, it, for that yeah. first season, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad. We did, we did meet Ace, and the show... <laughs> Who was actually from modern day and got... Yes. Yes. If, a time cloud sent her back from yeah, experimenting weird, with chemistry in her yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did something to send her back in time. Or forward in time. Forward in time. Yeah. Um, there, this, you could tell the BBC really was just trying to get rid of the show because this season was on Monday, and after Dragonfire, we next see the Doctor on Wednesdays. Which is Dragonfire also had the literal cliffhanger. The yes, hanging he's hanging off. from the umbrella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off the cliff for like ten in the min- next for like ten minutes. Then the next episode, you see, it's like, oh, it's really not that far down. Yeah, like, yeah. Why? Why did they make that seem scary? Yeah, but now season twenty-five, which was the next season on Wednesdays, this had a lot of good episodes. <laughs> it starts off at Remembrance of the Daleks. Mm-hmm. My favorite Dalek episode, the end of the trilogy, 
that started with Davison. This episode was it an anniversary episode? I was it like twenty five? Nineteen eighty eight, eighty nine. Yeah, so twenty five years. Like twenty five years. Yeah. Yep. We find that they basically kind of give the reason why the doctor came to Earth. It was yeah. they 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 land in the same area in the fifties. And there's two factions of Daleks now because of what happened in the last couple, the last couple of them. There's mm-hmm. Renegades led by Davros, and then there's Imperials. We see the Dalek with the tank front, uh, the like heavy weapons Dalek, mm-hmm. which was cool. There's a creepy little girl. Dalek oh, goes girl. up the stairs. The, yeah, the Dalek goes up the stairs for the first time. And uh, so, anyways, this episode actually takes pl- part of the episode takes place the very day Doctor Who airs. And there's a TV show mm. coming on the TV, and it says, up next is the BBC's brand new sci-fi show, and it cuts mm-hmm. to the next scene, which I thought was just great. I love that little touch. And you're back in Ian's classroom, the yeah. Cole Hill School. Yeah, same school. Uh, Ace, probably in the moment that's going to be remembered, that she'll be remembered mm-hmm. for the rest of her life. And even Sophie Aldridge said, I hope no one else ever <laughs> does something like that, because that's like her thing. Mm-hmm. Just beats the living snot out of a Dalek with a baseball bat. That, that well, it's charged by the yeah. power of the hand of Omega. O- Omega, o- yeah. o- Omega, or Omega. I was Omega. Omega. I think is how okay. They yeah. Say it. Uh, basically, the hand of Omega is an all can be just wield extraordinary power, and is what was used, I believe, to turn the star into the power yeah. source for the Tardises. And we find out that the Doctor went to Earth in that time period. He must have stolen it, and he came back in to Earth to hide it, so no one else would ever get that power. And it's in a grave in mm-hmm. that town, to- in that area. And he retrieves it, and he uh, supercharges the aluminum baseball bat Ace carries with it. <laughs> she beats the snot out of a Dalek. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a little bit of Nitro Nine used and thrown around. And quite honestly, Isn't there always with Ace. Yes, there was. I love Ace. I still do. <laughs> But it's, it's, fun. It, it's just a great up. Ep- I think it's a great episode. I think it's, I think it's very just solid. It's, it's a good nod to the past. It ties up some ends, and I'm sure they're gonna reopen those ends and make you know just <laughs> bastardize everything. But it, it's you know what? It's probably one of my favorite Dalek episodes. That and Asylum are like two of my top five, and mm-hmm. then Genesis, which I think is great too, mm-hmm. just because it was just it was just good. You know, you find out that the little girl is what they're going to use to control the hand of Omega. Mm-hmm. And I, I think the junkyard's even the same junkyard. Yeah. Where they find yeah. the Dalek in, I initially. Am foreman. Yeah, and it's not Unit yet. It takes place right before it, Unit's formed. Mm-hmm. And uh, in typical Sylvester McCoy fashion, he just opens the back of a van that has walks inside and starts talking to him. And they're like, wait, who are you? Mm-hmm. So, um, no, it's it's a good episode. I, I tell people all the time, if you want to get started on a classic Who, this is one of the good ones to start, especially for the for McCoy. Mm-hmm. It, it It's really a good episode. Yeah. We leave uh, Earth again, <laughs> and we meet the Happiness Patrol. The Candyman. With the Candyman, which we saw somebody dressed yep. up as, as, at Chicago TARDIS. It, that, is a, that was an amazing costume. Mm-hmm. This episode I enjoy, but I always mix it up with Paradise Towers. I don't know why. There's something about it. Like, for some reason, I picture the Candyman running through Paradise Towers. I, I, don't, I know he didn't. Maybe you've got a lost adventure. I mean, they visit a human colony, and everyone seems a little too cheerful. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, a little too, a little too upbeat. Yeah. And uh, I believe there's patrols of people that are obsessed with stopping unhappiness, hence the happiness patrols. Mm-hmm. And they go around, and anybody that's depressed or crying or upset, they uh, they call them killjoys and they kill them. <laughs> Why wouldn't that happen? <laughs> the Doctor and Ace encounter. I think he's a census taker or something like that, or she, he, or she. No, he's a census taker. And he's trying to find out why the population keeps dropping, like drastically. Mm-hmm. So they, of course, you know, go to help out. They get a, uh, they get arrested, you know, because why wouldn't they? Of course. 
and they eventually find out all the stuff that, you know, they're getting killed off, and it's because they're not, you know, happy, or... But I can't remember what was keeping them happy. There was something... There's something I'm missing on this episode. Again, some of them I just take away more, like, images. Because <laughs> I remember the Candyman. <laughs> yeah. I believe they find out there's a woman that's just, uh running it and that's how she wants it like she forced she's just forcing people to be happy is what I think her name I think her name was Helen that sound right and in the end there's like some pipe creatures that like or pipe people that help defeat the candy man by drowning him in fondant (laughs) and I believe she has a dog of some sort that gets crushed by in the sewers and so she's all upset about and eventually uh, she has her own sadness and Mm -hmm. that causes the revolution it's basically the revolution that Sets off everything, and everything changes. Yeah, she had and to they all feel they all work together. Sadness to, to show you yeah. needed both. Yeah, and then they all um, can't just be happy. They all end up uh, working together, I think, to fix the to rebuild society. But not a bad episode. Not, not mm-hmm. you know horrible. There's some other stuff he mentioned. The doctor talks about his academy days <laughs> in Gallifrey. You don't hear that mm-hmm. too often, and that he was a Theta Sigma. He, he talks about his classmate, Drax, uh, but he also mentions the, the Brigadier for the first time. Uh, they reference Invasion of the Dinosaurs, I think, also. So, yeah, he talks about his old mate and that. But I think <laughs> we see Drax in an episode. I'm not sure. And then the Happiness Patrol goes into <sighs> another anniversary episode, The Silver Nemesis. <laughs> they tried. They, mm-hmm. they, they've tried to really do good Cybermen episodes. I mean, they really do try. The Cybermen just I aren't... Hate Cybermen. They're just not cool. <laughs> like, the Daleks, it's like, they can kill me, but you know what? They're cool. <laughs> the, uh, the Cybermen just, just... It just doesn't work. In this episode, I don't even remember it. I just remember Ace goes upstairs, and she gets spotted by some Cybermen. She throws some Nitro-9. It, it's just a mess to me of an episode that I just don't remember. Yeah, well, they they also kind of threw everything into it, like in trying to yeah. make it an anniversary yeah. episode. It which, was like, we're going to throw everything into which, this so we can reference... Yeah, which people out there were complaining that this anniversary might not have everything from the 50th. Be kind of glad it might not have everything. Mm-hmm. Because just because it has everything doesn't make it good. Yeah. I mean, it's England, it's 1988... There's Cybermen facing off against neo-Nazis and a 17th century sorceress named Lady Penetforte. Or Penetforte, I can't pronounce it. And they're all trying to gain control of a statue made of a living metal, which was created by Rassilon as the ultimate defense for Gallifrey. I just read that off Wikipedia, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't remember the plot, because it's, and that's all it says. There's not even anything else about this episode. I mean, it, it just... It's it's funny. It got six million viewers the first episode and five point two each thereafter. Five point two million viewers is not bad. The fact that they canceled the show still astonishes me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just not just not great. Yeah, that was. I mean, that's how it kind of feels. Like they just threw a bunch of elements together and went, "Okay." Then you need the sorceress. <laughs> how would she know? How would a seventeenth century sorceress know about this metal? How would a group of neo Nazis know about this metal? <laughs> Why would the Cybermen need it? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I like the classic Cybermen more than the the new ones, but uh, it's just not. Yeah. And they, I guess the writer Kevin Clark, they, they on the DVD for the show, it says they he, they talk to him, and he said he points out that he had seen very little Doctor Who, and that he met the production team without any idea of what his proposed story mm-hmm. would be about. He made up a story on the spot in front of producer John Nathan Turner that doc- that the Doctor is literally God, though this was not realized on screen. Clark also appears twice in serial itself, playing a tourist at Windsor. <laughs> the Cybermen were added later at the request of Nathan Turner to tie in with the program Silver Anniversary. I mean, what was J&T thinking? He obviously wasn't focusing on the show mm-hmm. because it just this episode was just bad. <laughs> him, I know him and Andrew Cartmel were not talking for like years. They would only, like, send each other letters or some weird... Yeah. But the show was still getting viewers. I mean, so... Just not a good episode. 
Luckily, from that, we go to Greatest Show in the Galaxy. I don't think Nicole likes this episode much. <laughs> I enjoy this episode. I, I, don't, was... I don't dislike it. It's just... Compared to Silver ne- ne- Nemesis, this is yeah. fucking gold. Yeah, I didn't dislike it. It's just, it, it wouldn't be like one of my favorite compared to Compared to Silver Nemesis, this is Remembrance yeah. of the Daleks. <laughs> yeah, this, 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 this is... I hated those clowns. But they did their job. Oh. They were supposed to be creepy. I know, they did well. This was another episode that felt like a Douglas Adams thing. There were all these weird characters, all these different people, mm-hmm. these weird occurrences. I, I... Wasn't there a robot in this too? Well, yeah, the clowns. Weren't some of the clowns like I thought there was another one, too. There were robotic clowns. Yeah. There was uh, a ringmaster. Rapping ringmaster. Yeah. And Nicole knows more about the plot of this one. I, I, vi- I visually remember it. And I want to say there was a creature they were trying to keep happy. Yeah, they, were the, they were the gods of Ragnarok, I think. They okay. were like... And you like see them through... You don't know that, but they're, they're the audience for the circus throughout the whole thing. And they decide on the act. And and they're like three immortal beings, really, that are pretending to be a family at the circus. I guess. Right, right. Uh, and then at the end, McCoy does all his little magic tricks to, to distract them. them. Yeah, yeah. I remember that this this season, the episode started to get more well, than Silver Nemesis. <laughs> they got a little darker. They started touching more on his past and more on Ace's personal life. By the end of it, there was a lot more interaction about stuff. You know, which leads into the next season, actually, which was the final season. Yeah. But no, this one, was, I, I it, didn't it was a, dis- it was, it wasn't like it. I really yeah, didn't like it. Maybe it was somebody else. No, it's, I mean, it's not like I wouldn't count it as my no, favorite. No, but it's, McCoy, it's, it's, but above, it's above average, I think. The clowns were creepy. The, and it the is people on full the bu- of... The thing with the bus, the people they meet, the hippies and all that, I mean, <laughs> it's, it, it, it was, it was good. It wasn't, it wasn't bad. I, I liked this episode. Uh, again, not one of my favorites, but I think it was above average. Yeah. I mean, especially compared to Silver Nemesis. Well, and it's entertaining to see McCoy doing his little magic show. Yeah. <laughs> At the end. Yeah, no, it was. And he actually knew how to do all that himself. Mm-hmm. Or he learned parts of the, one, the ones he didn't know. I think he said they had an actual magician come in and teach him stuff, too. Which he remembers to this day some of the tricks, which is really neat. Um, then we lead into Season 26. Here's the funny thing. Greatest show in the galaxy. Let's see what the uh, ratings were for this. Let me look it up real quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, five million viewers. The first part five three four nine and six six. It ended with six point six million viewers. Doctor Who now gets what nine, <laughs> eight or nine, right? Usually, I think. not much off from this. So then we go to season six, which actually was a really good season. Mm-hmm. Every episode, I want to say, was good. In uh, it starts off with Battlefield, where I believe we meet the Brigadier, Brigadier again. Comes back, yeah. He's a teacher. No, no, that's, no, that's, he's, that's he's retired. When, yeah, he's retired in this one. And they bring him back. Yeah, but the Briggs in it, Doctor and Ace, um, they they get a distress signal from near there, mm-hmm. somewhere in England. And Ace gets to meet someone else who likes to blow things up. Actually, they meet another Brigadier first, Bambera, and he is in charge of a nuclear missile a nuclear missile convoy. And they find out that uh, there's some explosions, and I don't think it was the nuclear weapons, but they send for the brigadier to help out. And this is the one, right, that connects back to, like, Merlin and... Uh, yeah, there's, like, a scabbard that the they exca- excavate from a battlefield, or... and it hangs in the hotel, and it's hot when a doctor touches it. And the hotel's owner's wife is blind, but she says she can sense the scabbard waiting for something or someone. And they date. It's dated by an arche, an archaeologist to like the eighth century, but the doctor says he believes it's far older, and it's been waiting for something. Yeah, she meets uh, Shu, Shu Young. I, 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 there was Shou a Young? girl that she was. Yeah, it was another girl, who they shared they, her love of there explosives. are there are just constant conversations between the two about explosives. So at some point, though, someone thinks the doctor's like Merlin. I thought. Well, That's they go one, under the it? well. There's there's Mordred and Morgan, and they go to the hotel to retrieve Excalibur. <laughs> at one point. So yes, we are getting into the... Yeah. Well, the, the doctor and Ace enter a chamber under the lake, finding a door program to open it to doctor's voice. The doctor tells Ace that Merlin may well be his future self or paler version of himself from another universe, where magic is a substitute for technology. 
so yeah, he is Merlin, mm-hmm. and they find a chamber that is an organic part of an organic spaceship where they find the body of King Arthur lying next to a sword, which was the source of the distress call. So, oh, I believe Ace hides behind a door and it starts flooding and she's like drowning or something too, and the doctor has to save her. I believe uh, he ejects him, her from the spaceship, sending her through the waters of the lake as these two other people are standing there at the shore talking about the lady of the lake, Ace emerges. <laughs> I don't remember the... I don't remember the resolution of it. I believe two of them were going to fight it out and the doctor stops them and they realize that the battlefield from the past or whatever was just like a ploy to get the doctor to show up and I don't remember yeah. who the bad guy really was either. Uh, I believe yeah. I believe Ace and her friend actually blow up the hotel in this episode <laughs> too, if I'm correct, to help save the day. But... Again, not a bad episode, yet somehow yeah. this one dropped to 3.1 million viewers with a high of 4. Uh. I don't know why, because the last season ended really high. Mm-hmm. Uh, this episode wasn't too bad. It moves into Ghost yeah. Light, which actually, Ghost Light was pretty good. Another weird. good, dark, weird episode. Is this the one when is this the one when so they're weird. back where she... Um, yeah, where Ace her, blew uh, up the house, is it? They go back, and it's like a hundred years. Oh, this is the one where she, her friends are getting killed off. She, That's Curse of Fen, Fenric, I believe, then. She goes back, it's like a hundred years before she was there, because she just sensed there was like evil in the house and was afraid of it. So the doctor brings her back so she can conquer her fear and see what was really going on. And it's so Yeah, because like bizarre. I said, they, they, they started delving more into her personal yeah. life and his past, and things got darker. Yeah, so you've got, like, the alien ship that crashed and the almost, like, godlike being light or whatever that was cataloging all the species on Earth. And ups- he's upset because of evolution. His job just keeps getting <laughs> harder and And things keep harder. changing, so he wants yeah. everything to stop and... But he was, like, asleep, and in the meantime, there was the other guy that kept changing his appearance till finally he was human. I mean, it's, like, full of all these, like, bizarre... There's, like, the the weird, almost, like, zombie crew of maids that come out at night. Well, I was... I remember when I was watching Ghost Light, I was kind of like, this this was considered a children's show? You've got someone, like, cooked into soup. Yeah. People are being killed, right? I mean, it's, like... And it's all, like, creepy and... It's not being a children's show with Tom Baker's era. <laughs> I mean, to be completely honest. But, the, like, at the end of... Like, these episodes are like, wow, they're getting really, really dark again. And everyone's just, like... Because, yeah, that one, I, I... Well, this tone carries on through the Virgin New, New Adventures books. I can't say they're canon, but they shouldn't be ignored either. I mean, they're good books. Uh, yeah, no, Ghostlight was was not bad. Yeah, it, it was good. I mean, it's bizarre. But, yeah, it's yeah. really strange. <laughs> and then we lead into the Curse of Fenric, which has like they're back in World War Two in that one. Well, there's like a th- that one too gets kind of bizarre. And again, we're averaging four four million viewers, which is still down from last year, but not horribly. Mm-hmm. I mean, that last year was like five million average with a six million peak, and now you're at four. So. So what I'm saying is BBC from the 1980s can go suck a nut. I, I, that one I remember is another one where McCoy just like talks his way onto the top secret military base. He just is like... Well, there's a lot of continuity with this, <laughs> this one and a lot of the upper, other episodes. Uh, in the one part, mm-hmm. he's naming off names of his former companions. Yeah, because uh, it's... You could, you could hear him say Susan, Barbara, Vicky, Stephen. Uh, Ace mentions the old house in Perryville, which was supposed to be the... Sh- Foreshadowing of Ghost Light, mm-hmm. I think this was supposed to air first. Yeah, Ghost Light was the last episode they ever filmed of the classic Who. Yeah. So this was actually supposed to air first, and they switched it. But I think Ghost Light, part of the reason it doesn't always make sense is they cut it down, too. I remember them talking about that at Chicago. Yeah. Like, they cut an episode, so they condensed it, so things that probably would have made a little more sense. Do you remember any other details of this episode? The baby daughter of a young woman who... Whom Ace helps. It's actually Ace, I thought. It's her mother. Or yes. it's Ace's mother, that's right. Because they, and it's, she says, I remember, they're like, 
just say the name. I can't remember her mother's name, but she, they say the name of the baby. Like Ace really likes the baby, and then she like is like, "Yes, no, that's the name of the mother. I hate." And I'm like, "Okay, that baby's got to be her mother then later on, or else she had the weirdest reaction yeah. ever." Yeah. But yeah, she like saves her. Yep. Sends her away because yeah, you've got like there. There's the like the Vikings. They think there's some kind of Viking curse, and then the there's like the. I don't. I'm not good with the rankings. Whatever he was, there's like a scientist, and there's like a military guy that want to uncover it because they think it's going to give him power because it's World War II. And then they have like the computer, like the, they call it something different. It's like the Enigma machine, and the Russians are there to steal it. <laughs> it's like there's like all this double crossing because they're on the same side in this war, but they won't be eventually. So. I know part of the message at the end is they all have to work together. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, yeah, they've got like the the computer that the Russians want to steal, and then Ace keeps unknowingly helping the bad guys because the doctor doesn't tell her what's going on, and she's like going like, oh. Which starts to show how he's a little more sinister and conniving. He keeps more secrets from her. Because they yeah, had the code. Yeah. She's like looking. I remember she looks at like they're trying to figure out this code, and she like tells the professor like, oh, it's it, it's it's a logic code it's it's for a computer and and then the doctor like a few minutes later is like well at least he'll never figure out as long as he doesn't figure out that it you know goes for the computer and she's just like doctor why didn't you tell me and they're like that happens like three times where <laughs> she keeps helping them because she isn't on the same page as the doctor he didn't tell her yeah so then uh i do remember the next episode survival it's got cat people in it. Yeah. Anthony Ainsley makes his return as the master, his final final return. I don't think yeah. he's in the movie. No. No. And uh, it's the last season. It's the last episode. Mm-hmm. It's very bizarre. And the doctor and as the master... As most of that season was. Yeah, the doctor and the master really, like, they're, they're physically fighting it out at the end, trying to kill each other and mm-hmm. fighting for survival, really. Yeah. I mean, like it says... And I don't remember much about it other than watching that and going, "Wow, this is a great episode." But it was it was not a bad episode. I, it, yeah, none of these were really bad. I mean, no. some of them were a little confusing, but yeah, they 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 get kind of bizarre. A, I think they're but... on a planet where they killed for sport or something, kind of, and they're trying to stop it from happening. And yeah, there's these cat people, and mm-hmm. I, I don't remember every detail of it, but I, I remember the the master was trying to play trying to play the sides against each other or was he trying to just oh the master would never do that yeah i don't remember what he was doing there i remember he was there though <laughs> i remember thinking it was kind of funny that it ended on survival and then it's like oh, doctor who did not survive to the next season and this episode finished out with five five million viewers so again right on par with the last couple seasons and mccoy was he t- said this himself that he was brought back under the assumption to be a 27th season mm-hmm. they told him to be a 27th season they told cartmel they told J- jnt uh, they canceled it. Turner had nowhere to go. They were getting rid of all their in-house producers and just farming it out. And they yeah. told them, "Well, if you quit, we'll hire you on as a, you know, one of them." And he quit, mm-hmm. and they never called him. Yeah. I mean, the BBC was a group of assholes, or sorry, as they say in England, arseholes, <laughs> and just totally screwed tons of people, just basically because there were a few people that had a vendetta against science fiction and Doctor Who. And if you ever hear a podcast, rotten hell. <laughs> um, but, no. Um, so, that's kind of it. I mean, that was, that's the classic, I don't know, there's one more that you'll talk about, because I don't remember <laughs> much about it. I remember watching it and thinking it was, I remember watching the TV movie going, it's Doctor Who. Yeah. Somewhat. You know, I and mean, that's... I get that, arg- somebody argued me, argued with me, oh, Brian was arguing with me about that. I'm like, well... When you have the sh- when your favorite show's off the air for six seven years and it comes back, that's you know what? Because he's like, it wasn't good. I'm like, it wasn't good, but it wasn't as bad as it's made out to be. No. Like, Brian really doesn't like it, and that's fine. I mean, everyone's got their you know. Well, thing. it's but the next time we see the Eighth Doctor is in that episode when he gets gunned down on the streets of San Francisco, because apparently the mean streets of San Francisco. <laughs> I don't remember why the TARDIS was there. He's all alone. There's no companion. Well, he was he was carrying, which is the part that makes no sense. Some of the setup, you're oh, like, oh, he was carrying the master. the master's remains back to Gallifrey uh, because actually, the Daleks had put him on trial. 
The Daleks were so big on trials, they had a trial for the master, condemned him to death, but his they granted him his last request. So the doctor has to come and remove his remains. And then there's like the the jar cracks open and you see the little snake like thing come out and it like gets in the TARDIS and makes it land there. You know, I'm not going to lie. Uh, 5.6 million viewers in the U.S. And it was on Fox. I think that was the, the big thing. It was on a major network. In, but they aired it opposite of, I believe, some baseball playoffs in the final se- episode of Roseanne, yeah. which was a hot show. So, I mean, but you probably would only gain another million or two. I mean, really. Uh, 9.1 million in the U.K., though. That's huge. It is. It, it's yeah. it's on par with almost every episode. It's better than half the episodes they've aired since 2005. <laughs> I want to say most of the episodes aired have been in the 8 million range, 7 to 8. Because mm-hmm. I remember that there was talk that it might be canceled because they were down to like 7.5 million. I'm like, that's really good <laughs> in U.K. TV. I mean, from what yeah. I, my understanding is... Uh, I remember looking at Paul again and not liking how he was dressed, but liking how he was playing the part. I thought he played it okay. Mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't put him in my list of favorites. And I, in, in fact, when I do make a list of favorite doctors, he's not on it at all because he was in one episode. You know, these people that are like, mm-hmm. he was great. He was. You, know, you can't say that. You you know, you don't know how he would have been. He's good in the big finish. The mm-hmm. the books with him were good. I've read them. You know. And honestly, the master didn't regenerate. He stole the body of yeah, the uh, paramedic. The paramedic who was um, Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts, Julia Roberts' brother. But and it, I didn't think he played the part badly. No, it's just it. It's, which is my argument. It's like you know, you, you can say the movie's horrible, but the acting wasn't that bad. The no. storyline was wonky. Well, they and the threw special in, effects were. They uh, threw in that weird thing too that the, the Eye of Harmony was on the TARDIS, and only a human can look into it, and the Doctor can do it because he's half human. Does this count as a classic series or not? It's kind of the gray area. (laughs) But see, if it was in this, if you're going to say that, if you're going to say, aside from the 50th, because, you know, call to doctors again, if you're going to say that Eccleston was the 9th and McCoy was the 8th, or 7th, McGann's the 8th, and if you're going to say it only counts counts as canon if it's on TV, this was on TV, it was an official production... But in this it was one a poor too, story got, point to do that that way. Yeah. It was poor writing. But it is like this one, I almost feel like it's like they, it's almost, and I don't know, and probably whoever wrote it knew their Doctor Who, but I don't think they it did. felt like they just took elements and like stuck them in the script without really understanding them because you have yeah, all they these didn't little know, They like, didn't really know. Well, I mean, it's funny because you, you say about this, it talks about the Eye of Harmony being on the TARDIS. In the new episodes, it's on yeah. the TARDIS. Um, the master didn't regenerate when he died, when John Sims was the master. He became, you know, he was in whatever, you know. Mm. So there are some things in this one that carry over and are used again, kind of, you know. Yeah, so, just, it was, some of them were. But, you know, I think the TARDIS design inside, I thought it looked cool, but mm-hmm. I like cyberpunk and stuff like that. And that's what it kind of was. It was kind of cyberpunky, mm-hmm. kind of steampunky. To me, the interior was a little ahead of its time, and that that craze hadn't caught on to where people be mm-hmm. would like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it just yeah, it wasn't terrible. Oh, of course, the first kiss between a doctor and a companion happened in the movie. Yeah, bloody Americans. <laughs> but I that one I was like, he also has amnesia when he's regenerates. McGann doesn't remember who he is or yeah, what's going you know, on I, in the I beginning. Can, I can get past all that because, first off, this is the first one that shows like a regeneration that looks like what might really happen. Mm-hmm. Like the fi- like McCoy's face distorts, there's little lightning mm-hmm. bolts. It, w- it kind of was Highlander-esque with the lightning bolts and stuff. But it, it showed, they tried to portray it in a more realistic way, I guess, where now like fire shoots out of him mm-hmm. and he destroys the TARDIS and it goes crashing into, always seems to crash into planet Earth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, so at least they, yeah. So at least they showed it in a way that mm. you know was kind of neat. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I can't say it's you know a nine or a ten, you know, but I can't say it's a one or a two or a three yeah. either. I mean, but you really don't. It's see better than some of the old classic episodes. 
It's I mean, really hard, though, to judge McGann's doctor, which is what blows my mind, because the first, like, 20 minutes are it's still McCoy. McCoy. And, he's, and part of that, he's dead laying on a, on, in a morgue. And then he comes back, and he has amnesia, so he doesn't even know who he is. He's just... He doesn't right. really become, like, the doctor second time proper rege- until... Second time a regenerated doctor's in the hospital and has to escape, though. <laughs> Pertwee, right? Yep. Uh, also, it, I found out that Eric uh, Roberts' wife actually played uh, Miranda... Who was, I believe, the wife of the character he played until he was taken over by the master. So he kills her. Yeah, yeah <laughs> they're probably divorced now too. <laughs> uh, Philip Siegel was a producer. He'd been trying for years to launch an American produced series of Doctor Who once it went off the air. And you know what? Complain and bitch all you want about America and about everything else and about how bad this was. What were you Brits doing to re- <laughs> bring it back? Anything? Mm-hmm. Because it showed that the show transcended the Atlantic, and that we we liked it enough that somebody wanted to bring it back. If you look at the um, the beginning, or is it the beginning? If you look at the beginning of the 2005 credits, like how the TARDIS goes through, and if you look at the way the TARDIS travels through the time vortex in this movie, they're very similar. There was some, again, there was mm-hmm. a lot of stuff that's been taken from it and used again. You know, like I said, say what you mm-hmm. want. It's like a four to me. It's not, I'm not going to put it down at a one. And there, no. what's the Pertwee episode that you hate? Monster of Peladon. That's a one. <laughs> I would watch this all day over that. <laughs> In fact, I would probably watch this over Silver Nemesis, to be completely honest. So, I mean, yeah, yeah but it's just hard to judge McGann and what he would have done with it. And I think, you know, that was part of it, too, is... I don't know how if McGann was well known in the UK, you know, I I don't um, I know he wasn't well known here. No. You know, and it, Doctor Who in America for a long time it always had this. It's the guy with the scarf, right? <laughs> oh, I like who was the guy with the scarf? That's the guy I liked the most. You know, so many people grew up watching Tom Baker that that was who they liked, and when you get a show m- mid run where you don't realize that that's not the original guy, <laughs> you know, because. I think on and off they showed like the really old old ones at times. Like when my dad was a kid, he remembers watching them in black and white. So those might have been Hartnell or Troughton for a while. Mm-hmm. You know who knows. But I, I, you, had, you had a society of people growing, growing up watching it as Tom Baker, and he was there for so long, no one knew that he was supposed to change. And when he changed, I think a lot of people were kind of like, "Well, that's my I like that guy," mm-hmm. you know. But it's it's just really hard to. Uh, to really say anything good or bad about McGann. I mean, I, mean, I thought his, his performance doctor had bad. potential. I, yeah. He could have been interesting. It's just, it's hard to, you're like, well, it's like, I mean, like, you couldn't have judged Peter Davison's character if you just watched Castrovalva. Yeah. He's unconscious for half of it. He's, it doesn't really, his doctor doesn't really completely take shape till the next episode and further on. It did win the 1996 Saturn Award for Best Television Presentation. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, it's... It's not... Like you said, how do you judge it? I mean, because I, I was like, I, I liked his doctor, what I saw of him, but you don't really... See him. Yeah. It, and it's... Daphne Ashbrook, I, I wasn't a real huge fan of her in the in the, in the movie. No. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, Matt Smith's cool, he's riding a motorcycle. Yeah, uh, McGann did it. Didn't, wasn't, wasn't he riding a motorcycle yeah. with her on the back? I mean, yeah, yeah. okay, whoop You know, again, another thing that was used again, you know. Mm-hmm. First time he used a, first time he drove a vehicle since Baker. I don't think he'd driven anything since Tom Baker drove Bessie, and then Probably he's Probably not, yeah. Yeah, you know. So, I don't know, but that's our classic Who wrap-up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I am going to give a shout out to our friend Amanda, who has done a song just in time for the 50th anniversary, based off of a Weird Al Yankovic song. Mm-hmm. I believe she got his permission for it, even. And she gives a rundown, much like we did, of <laughs> all the classic doctors and companions, much quicker and much more concisely, and probably better detailed than we did in about three and a half, four minutes. <laughs> so, a uh, little shout out to her there, and we'll post it on the. Uh, Maybe I'll cut it into the... You know what? If you hear music at the end of this, it might be part of that song. 
So thanks for listening. I don't think anybody else has anything else, right? No. Nope. Thanks for listening, and we won't. You won't hear from us again until the anniversary is aired. <gasps> because someone's going on vacation. Uh, but anyways, so we'll see you after the anniversary. <laughs> wow. So uh, thanks for listening, and I'm John. I'm Nicole. I'm Joanna. And we've been two girls, a guy, and a TARDIS. Yay! Is the 